Hi everybody, welcome to 19 Now, the only place you'll find East Texas news at 6.30, both online and on your television. Log on to our KYTX Facebook page so we can talk to you live during the show. Well, we told you last week about all the loose gravel on Loop 49 and the many drivers now getting windshields repaired. Tonight, well, we have some good news about the construction chaos to share with you. I'm Kenley Hargett. Coming up on 19 Now, Longview Police have new information on Saturday morning's death of Arthur Gray. I have all the details coming up. We continue our breast cancer awareness coverage. Scars are reminders of the pain people have been through. So breast cancer survivors are adding ink. Tonight, we take you to a tattoo shop covering the scars of suffering with signs of hope. And we'll head out to Doc Wilk's House of Horrors in Longview. If you're into scaring yourself, well, this is the place to be. See how my daughter Haley and her friend Anna fared against the things that go boo and the chainsaws that go roar. Well, new tonight, Longview police are interviewing the person they say had an altercation with a man whose body was found Saturday morning. 19 Now's Kenley Hargett has more on the investigation. Kenley. Brian, please tell me 32 year old Lloyd Johnson was the man who had an altercation with Gray prior to finding his body. Please tell me he's fully cooperating with their investigation. The body of Arthur Gray was found in a home on Odin Street. Police say Gray did not live in the home. 32 year old Lloyd Johnson did live there and went to the hospital from injuries he received from Gray. Johnson was later arrested for unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. Longview police tell us Johnson has not been charged with Gray's death. Mr. Johnson has been fully cooperative with us and with the initial part of the investigation. Uh, he was the resident there at 1507 Odin and uh, Mr. Gray had come over sometime during the night to visit with him. There have been three murders in Longview this month. Police say none of them are gang related. If you have any information on any of the crimes, you're asked to call Longview police or Crime Stoppers. Reporting for 19 Now in Longview, Kimley Hargett. Thank you, Kimley. Well, continuing coverage tonight, Toll 49 in Smith County is clean and free of loose gravel. That's according to the Northeast Texas Regional Mobility Association. Construction on Toll 49 left loose gravel all over the roadway last week, causing broken windshields for some East Texans. If you have any damage to your windshield from driving the road, you can still get help. Net RMA will file any damage reports for you. The number to call is on our website at cbs19.tv. Well, early voting is underway in Smith County. Two big things on the ballot. A bond package worth over $39 million that would serve as the first phase of a comprehensive road reconstruction project. Another hot item on the ballot is Proposition 1 that would allow the sale of alcohol in ARP. 107 people cast a vote today. Well, survivors of breast cancer often face a long and painful journey, even after their cancer is in remission. The scars of surgery are a constant reminder of what they went through. Photojournalist Corky Scholl introduces us to some women who have chosen to replace those scars. Did you ever think you were going to get a tattoo when you were younger? Oh, heavens no. Really? Today is our second annual P Ink Day here in Denver. Six artists have donated their entire day to provide free mastectomy coverage tattoos to six breast cancer survivors. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. I'm super excited. And will you put like some shading on it too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like it. I had breast cancer four years ago, had bilateral mastectomy, um, had everything taken off. And this is so beautiful. I am going on 16 years on breast cancer survivor. Nice. It's, it's hard to look at. It's hard to look at the scars. That would be tough. I had my scars replaced with tattoos at the first Boulder P Ink Day in 2014. I didn't realize that really the scars were always still the first thing I saw when I looked in the mirror. I never saw anything beautiful and now I see this beautiful, whimsical, personal artwork that's just me and it expresses who I am. We are ready for our first two reveals. What do you think? Scars aren't something that any of us as breast cancer survivors chose. All right, girl. What we are left with after mastectomies okay. is not when you're ready. us anymore. <sighs> my perception of myself, my perception of my body image is improving today. All right, it is time for Julie's reveal, everybody. Oh my goodness. 
Being able to choose a piece of beautiful artwork makes us feel more like we have been able to close a chapter in our life and be able to see something beautiful in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> where before all we saw <laughs> were some ugly scars. So, so welcome, absolutely. Six tattoo artists from All Sacred Tattoo volunteered for the event. Nice story. Well, it won't be long before the Salvation Army bells will be ringing, and in Longview, they're already collecting applications for their angel tree. The program that began in 1979 provides gifts to children in need for Christmas. The goal, to help 500 families. This year, they are also collecting gifts for seniors. Families can sign up now through Friday. Well, we've got ourselves a pleasant start to the evening. Let's look outside and see some high clouds on the on the infrared this evening. Now, no rain beneath those clouds and they'll continue to pass off to the south pretty rapidly. As far as temperatures go tonight, we'll have a nice fall off into the 50s and eventually I think probably some upper 40s by the time we're all said and done early on what will be uh, Tuesday. We're also going to be windy. Speaking of Tuesday, Lake Wind Advisory in place for all the shaded counties there, 15 to 25, some gusts as high as 30 tomorrow afternoon. So be prepared for that. If you've got any loose uh, decorative items out in the yard or on the property, we need to get that stuff uh, tacked down before then. 70 on Wednesday, 76 Thursday. Stout cold front in here, Brian, on Friday. A few showers possible. More likely, you're going to be in the 30s Saturday morning. I don't think we get out of the 50s for highs on Saturday and most likely the coolest nights uh, so far this season on Sunday morning will be widespread, I think, mid to upper 30s, maybe some frost early on Thursday morning or on Sunday morning, rather, especially north of the I-20 corridor. Some of that cool northern air, brother, coming back in. All right. Thanks, Doc. Time to go on a weekend getaway, I think. <laughs> I oh, love that sound. The World Series is set. The Houston Astros will take on the L.A. Dodgers beginning tomorrow night. East Texas is home to many Astros fans. The biggest we found, the owner of All Star Barbecue in Rusk. He's been a super fan for decades, and his restaurant is proof. I've always been an, an Astro fan growing up outside of Houston. Russell Turner opened All Star Barbecue 25 years ago. He says it was never his intent to deck his restaurant out with Astros memorabilia, but once he started, well, he just couldn't stop. Why don't I just put Astro stuff? They've always been my favorite team. And then once I started putting that stuff up, I probably became obsessed at that time. Every customer who visits leaves with an Astros baseball card. Now, to Rangers fans, Turner says he doesn't discriminate, but if they get rowdy, there are picnic tables outside. All in good fun, of course. Way to go, Russell. There are still some World Series tickets out there, but not on the Astros website. You have to go through a third party, and they'll cost you close to 1000 bucks. The World Series begins tomorrow in Los Angeles. Games 3, 4, and 5 are scheduled for Houston, then back out to L.A. Well, a high school filmmaker is in the national spotlight, making films with powerful messages. I could relate because I know a lot of people that have come to the U.S. because of all the stuff that's been going on down in Mexico. There's um, cartels, I've witnessed it. See how this South Texas teenager is bringing attention to a big issue. Plus, we have a new Facebook contest this week. Log on and find out what we're giving away. It's coming up after the break. Oh, let me, oh, you're going to get me there. All right. Hi, Facebook. Hi, everybody. Uh, happy Monday, everybody. I'm just chatting with Doc Deese, and he, he's going to take up. You on tonight or no? Yes. Yeah, boy, you, you all week? You loaded with us? Tonight and tomorrow, Doc Deese is going to be on all shows. They're really working your tail off, aren't they? 
Yeah. Maybe you can get the temperature rise up a little bit over the weekend. <laughs> All right, Doc's out of here. Hey, everybody on Facebook Live. Thanks for watching on this Monday. Big Monday happening. We got some great stories. And then uh, a little bit later on, no guest tonight, but it's just as good as a guest. Last week, I took my daughter and her friend Anna out to Doc Wilkes' House of Horrors. Horror? House of Horrors? Horror house? <laughs> I, I think it's a house of horrors, not a whorehouse. Uh, <laughs> that's why we're on the internet. But uh, no, you got to see it. You got to see it. They have a maze that they went through first, and then they went through the, the haunted house, and Scotty's laughing in my ear for that last one. But uh, you got to see it. It's a lot of fun. It's coming up in a, in a couple here. Got a couple of good stories. So thanks for tuning in on Facebook Live. Tell your friends. This is what you get in commercial breaks. Shooting for the Stars on Our Border, a Texas high school senior's three-minute short film is making rounds at award shows nationwide. As border correspondent Oscar Margain reports, the young man is bringing a highly debated issue to the forefront while putting his school on the map. Behind every Ramiro Cantu film lies a message. In a few spoken words, this three-minute public service announcement is saying a whole lot about Ramiro and his latest school project. I started seeing some articles about uh, Syrian refugees and I didn't think that the media was doing them right. Early this year, Ramiro cast a few actors and assembled a crew to create hashtag Refugees Welcome, intended to change people's views about the U.S. taking in war-torn refugees. I could relate because I know a lot of people that have come to the U.S. because of all the stuff that's been going on down in Mexico. There's um, cartels. I've witnessed it. For the past four years, Ramiro has lived on his own in Texas, while his parents live across the border in neighboring Reynosa, making ends meet to pay for his mother's cancer treatment. I was incredibly proud, and I still am incredibly proud. It's that struggle that Ramiro's mentor, Mr. Roberto Garza, believes gives students in the McAllen School District an edge. We look beyond all of our borders. I mean, this was a story that Ramiro didn't have a direct connection with. Um, it's something that's happening around the world, but he connected with it. Evidently, he wasn't the only one making a connection. This year, hashtag Refugees Welcome has won Best of Show Award in a state competition and best PSA nationally at the All-American High School Film Festival in New York City. We grow a really strong bond. Ramiro and his lead actor, Mayela Ramirez, are walking on clouds down the road of success with their eyes set on their next prize at an international film contest in Turkey. Both Ramiro and Mr. Garza are hoping to raise enough money in time to make it to the award show in November. Here. There we go. Whatever the outcome, what this pair of high schoolers wish is for the video to be shared and a message to be understood. I hope people realize that there are others in this world that are facing these hardships and they shouldn't go through it alone. In McAllen, near the Texas-Mexico border, I'm Oscar Marquine reporting. Ramiro is already working on his next film, which will focus on school shootings. A recommendation, if you'd like to learn more about this young director, head to RamiroCantu.com. You'll find out all about Ramiro's work and upcoming projects. You can also learn how you can help send Ramiro and his teacher to Turkey. And feel free to always give us a recommendation. You can get our attention with that hashtag, NowNation. Coming up after the break, we'll get you in the mood for Halloween, or maybe we'll just scare the tar out of you. Dude! Hi. Oh, ah! <laughs> See how Doc Wilk's House of Horrors ranks on the teenage fright scale. My daughter and her friend would probably give it a 10. It's next. Hi, Facebook people. 
I haven't checked the computer today, to be honest with you. So I'll check it after the show if you want to leave me a message. We're just a little busy with everything that's going on, moving around. But uh, I, actually, I'll probably check it in the next break. Steve Smith said, oh, thank you. You guys got it on in there? S Steve said hi. Laura said hi, and this is going to be great. What's going to be great, Laura? Oh, she didn't say. Maybe just the... I'm just gonna assume it's the whole show. The whole show, I'm just gonna say the whole show is gonna be great. I don't care, Libby, not just the haunted house, the whole show is gonna be great. You produced it. Just go with the whole show. The whole show is gonna be great for crying out loud. And who else, who else do you say, Scotty? Hi, Ian or Ian? Hi, Ian, Hi, Ian Tran, he's, I think he's commented before. Hi, Hi, Ian, thanks for commenting. Appreciate it. And thanks for everybody who's watching on this Monday. This next story is going to be great, though. Uh, it's the Doc. Maybe you, can you see it, Scotty, right here? The Doc Will House of Horrors. We went out there Thursday. Our photojournalist, Alan, went with me. I had my camera. He had his. And we filmed a couple of teenagers, my daughter and her friend, Era, excuse me, her friend, Anna, going through this thing. There's a maze and then there's the haunted, haunted house portion, the House of Horrors. It's great. It's great. You got to see it. You'll see it in about 30 seconds. So thanks for watching. Feel free to comment if you want. Be nice, though. Be the good. Producer Libby dared me and I took the challenge. Well, at least one member of the Bose family took the challenge. Doc Wilkes' House of Horrors in Longview is no joke when it comes to scaring people. And really, who wants to see a 46-year-old man get scared, right? I'd much rather see my 15-year-old daughter Haley and her friend Anna tackle Milroy's maze and the horrific tour through the good doctor's haunted lair. All right, we're here with Eugene and Jacob Wilkes. Uh, you guys gotta promise me first and foremost that these girls are gonna be scared. <laughs> You think I'm running in these hills and I'm not. It's not happening. Oh, they'll be scared. Guarantee you. Anna, you said on the way out here you were going to have a good time peeing your pants. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> peeing your pants is a good time. Uh, yeah. Well, get, time. well, we'll see if that can happen. We'll see if we can oblige. Mm, Let's hope yeah. we all have a good time. Put it Wait, ah! Go! No! Yeah, go! <laughs> oh, God, it's dark! Oh. I'm not having a good time! <laughs> Said if you'd... Ah! No! No! You're not even in yet. I know! <laughs> they said if you had trouble with the maze, I know. good luck with the house. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Was it as good as you guys thought? Yes. Was it as scary as you guys thought? It was scarier than I thought. You scream a lot and you sweat a lot and I peed my pants. You peed like, your what? pants? Ah! <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming along. If you want to pee your pants, then come. Thanks for coming along. <laughs> I want to How about it? <laughs> Haley's on laundry duty this week. Make sure you check out Doc Wilkes' House of Horrors on Market Street in Longview. You can go Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night. We want to thank the Wilkes family for letting us take the tour. You can go on Halloween, too, if you dare. Well, tell teens not to text and drive. But when warnings don't work, there's a new device that might do the trick. For real lasting change to take place, and 
the best way to do that is to not have the distraction get into the vehicle in the first place. See the new device that can take the distraction right out of the car. It's coming up in two. A Colorado company claims to have the solution for distracted driving. Yes, there are apps and other measures on cell phones to curtail this too. But as Nelson Garcia shows us, this new device promises to go one step further. But think of it like a little small uh, cell phone. In order to drive without distractions. But every car has a, a plug underneath that it's used when you do diagnostics in your car. Scott Tibbetts created something. You just push the device right like that and that's it. Taking the distraction out of the car. We started down the path of this is easy, just jam the phone. Well, that's illegal. Tibbetts is CEO of a company called Katasi. The name came from a Greek word that means to hush. He created Groove, which plugs directly into the car's computer, which connects to the network, telling phone companies when a customer is behind the wheel. So if this car started moving at 1027 and one of the three phones started moving at 1027, we know that that person is the one that's in the car. Phone service, texts, and social media messages can be shut off by the network. Tibbetts says drivers cannot fool the system. Well, if you pull the device out, it immediately sends a message that you pulled the device out, and we can turn off texting. He started working with a national carrier called Ready Mobile. We have uh, about three and a half, four hundred thousand subscribers nationwide. And CEO Dennis Henderson. It's all about changing behaviors for real lasting change to take place. And the best way to do that is to not have the distraction get into the vehicle in the first place. You know, Dennis sends me a uh, text message. Okay, so now let's try it while we're driving. Tibbetts says the key in all this is to work with mobile carriers, not just Ready Mobile, but all of them to keep everyone safe. We really hope that carriers around the world will follow suit to save countless lives. I am sick of this, and we are all sick of this. we got to do something. That something is getting everyone into the groove. The Groove device retails for about $100, monthly $10 service fee. Probably worth it. Well, coming up, a new Facebook contest, how you can win a digital download of Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, plus a Galaxy S2 tablet. What you need to do to win, coming up after the break.
this thing. <laughs> it looks kind of... Okay, actually, it looks really cool. This week, we're celebrating Minecraft Story Mode Season 2. <laughs> ah, a Facebook contest. Yeah, daily winners receive a digital two digi or Season 2 digital download. I'm, I'm on the ball here. Then on Friday, we're giving away the grand prize, the digital download, plus a Samsung Galaxy S2 tablet. Today's winner, Jasper Curtis from Bullard. Congratulations, Jasper. Look for an email from us on when and where you can pick up your prize. Hey, Ryan, coming up tonight on CBS 19 News at 10, sex trafficking is happening all around us in plain sight. One prevention group identified more than 5,500 cases in the U.S. last year alone, and many of those victims are American kids. But to solve the problem, we have to understand how it happens and who is behind it. Plus, you may know him from Expedition Texas, and you might recognize him as his alter ego, Halloween Harvey. Bob Malden joins us on the CBS 19 stage for Music Monday. Those stories and much more tonight at 10. Brian, back to you. Thank you, Tashara. Well, that's a wrap for me, producer Libby, and the entire 19 Now Nation. Thanks for watching. Remember, be the good. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same 19 Now place.